Well, the the okay, the last turtle I wanted to ask about was again out of personal interest uh, the role of the prefrontal cortex in determining behavior, and I was particularly curious about how it shaped might shape or contribute to our eating behavior uh, because I started a a, a diet yesterday. Oh, uh, okay. Well. First thing is, I hope you've got a prefrontal cortex because that's going to be really central to this. This endeavor. Prefrontal cortex, yep. Front of your head, front of your brain. Uh, distinctive features. Uh, it's the most recently evolved part of our brain. We've got more of it proportionally than any other species out there, or at least we've got more complicated wiring. It's the last part of our brains to mature. So somewhere on the average around mid-grad school, one gets a fully formed frontal cortex. It's around age 25 or so. So what's the frontal cortex do? Self-control, emotion regulation, long-term planning, gratification, postponement, all of that. And thus, like the reason why, you know, adolescents behave in adolescent ways is because they don't have a mature frontal cortex yet. The rest of their brain is going full blast and they don't have much frontal cortex. Um, so anytime you're in a circumstance where you are tempted to do something and you know that's not the right thing and you're struggling with it, the struggling neurobiologically is your frontal cortex telling the emotional parts of the brain, don't do it, don't do it, you're going to regret it. Believe me, I know it sounds like a good idea right now really don't do it. And all sorts of classic studies where like you got somebody who's dieting and you sit them down at the table and there's a bunch of M&Ms sitting there and just saying that makes me want to have some M&Ms. Um, but the person is dieting. But if you've just made their frontal cortex work hard by a whole class of like puzzle type tasks that rely upon frontal function, you kind of tired out your frontal cortex. And then afterward, they eat more M&Ms than if they hadn't had that sort of frontal depleting sort of thing. If you have somebody who hasn't eaten in a while, they have more trouble doing frontal cognitive tasks. It goes in both directions. So yeah, frontal cortex is real critical. And the things about it is not only are you can still constructing it in your early 20s, not only is experience and environment helping to teach you what counts as the right thing to do in any circumstance, but already when you were a fetus, the level of stress your mother exposed to is impacting the rate at which you're beginning to construct your frontal cortex. So you've got 25 years worth of how lucky were you? How lucky were you in your biology? How lucky were you in your sort of environment? Are you going to have a brain which at the, you know, splits in the road of temptation where it's clear what's the right thing to do, even though that's harder, are you going to wind up being someone with every, every opportunity, you make the wrong choice, you make the impulsive one, you make the short-sighted one, and, you know, our jails are filled with people who had circumstances producing brains in them where in at least one critical juncture, they sure made the right, they sure made the wrong choice uh, because it was a more tempting one to do. And that's got a whole lot to do with that sort of prefrontal cortex life and luck has gifted you. Well, yeah, emotional control, long-term planning, self-control. I can see why the, the PFC will be very important for me. Indeed. And just to, to wrap this up before we get to that punishment, uh, I, I mentioned earlier, well, my phrase was that the intent was sort of your master argument, just saying, like, where does intent come from? That's the big question. And I'm wondering if the purpose for you then of explicating all these numerous different arguments for the absence of free will going into complexity and quantum and determinacy and, and chaos theory that all aren't really directly relevant to the biological question of how intent forms. Is the purpose of this to just prevent your opponents from trying to wiggle their way out? Or is it just to give a really comprehensive look at all these different ways that 
we don't have free will, even if the biological route is sufficient for your purposes? Um, yes to both. Uh, definitely uh, yes to, well, let's have a broad survey of compatibilist thinking these days about where free will might come from. And there's some who say it may be based in this interesting new area of neurobiology, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, it's also like if you're on a date with someone and they're telling you free will comes from your quantum determinacy, um, here's why you should be skeptical, either very locally or very globally. Yeah, it's, oh God, if you get somebody who, who does the free will comes from like emerging complexity here's what you can do to tell them why that actually doesn't make any sense so that that was more like a public service announcement doing that was taking on those three topics <laughs> <laughs>